Welcome to Brownsville Minute, a community conscious conversation and a platform that provides information, wellness, love, and unity all on a digital platform. And our goal is to try to make sure that our community residents are informed, conscious, and that we are connecting the dots on a virtual platform. The Brownsville Minute is designed for everyone. Please join us with the Brownsville Minute. Well, hello there, beautiful people. I hope that you all are doing well. I hope that you are safe, sane, and feeling well today. It's so good to have you join the Brownsville Minute. I am excited because we are going to really unpack today what a beautiful and healthy community looks like with one of our community advocates and just community, like a community auntie. So I am really excited to present to you today just a more in-depth conversation. As you know, we here at the Brownsville Minute, we really like to provide information that community residents and stakeholders can use. This information, this program is, op is open access. Um, and so we encourage you that if you have information, if you have uh, programs and services that you want to share within the community, please consider this as another way, another resource to be able to serve and provide resources to the community. I have the good benefit today to interview the executive director and founder of Isabella Ladies of Elegance Foundation, um, Ms. Brenda Duchesne. It is really amazing when you have um, individuals who are um, really caring and provide care differently to our community. Um, Ms. Duchesne provides um, services uh, within the community under her organization, um, pre free computer training, cultural arts workshops, gardening workshops, um, healthy meals, um, and home economics. And when I think about home economics, I'm now almost 20, 25 years removed from being at high school. That was the last time I actually took a home at class where I was actually learning how to bake lasagna, um, learning how to um, you know, do things around a home. I don't know what we're doing nowadays, but that's when the last time they actually had it within the classroom. So to under to see that this is something that is embedded within this organization, it's a, it's a gem and something that should not be overlooked. Um, Ms. Duchesne is an urban um, USDA registered farmer and runs five community gardens. I don't know how Ms. Duchesne does it, but when we bring her from backstage, she will be able to share her love and journey within the Brownsville East New York com com communities. Um, Ms. Duchesne is very committed, very driven, high energetic, personality with the ability to work with sensitive and confidential information, um, working with a number of different um, elected officials, um, supervising staff, but now really sharing her love and passion with community gardening. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Ms. Brenda Duchesne. 
Hello. Hi, Miss Anita. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for being here. I feel like I am talking to one of my favorite aunties, and you're just going to give me all this good. <laughs> how how was your day so far? My day been good so far. Yeah. Getting um, we are you know as the weather change. Um, even though they said some some people saying there's no global warming, there is. Um, mm -hmm. I remember years ago, this time of the year, it was still warmer than what it is now. Um, close down the gardens and um, do our market indoors instead of all outside. Because as we get younger, <laughs> the bones can't handle the cool outside no more. <laughs> Yeah, I, I learned a little bit of that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, but I'm I, I'm good. Um, as I tell everyone, I stay busy. I mm -hmm. stay busy. Um, as I hear the introduction, I wear a lot of caps. One mm -hmm. of my favorite is um farming, um, and with that being a beekeeper. Um, wow. I'm busy, you know, we have so much demand now for honey um, since the cold weather has crept in. Um, I'm also a chicken keeper. Um, so I'm busy, you know, getting everybody um, ready for the cold weather that's coming in. So like I said, I stay busy. Um, I also heard you saying about home ec. I love making stuff. I love arts mm -hmm. and crafts. And you're correct. Um, my oldest is 40 plus. And many moons ago, I did not realize now with my grands that they took all of those things out of the school, which mm -hmm. is sad. And I wish they'd bring it back. Because we need that. The kids need that. And with this covert, I'm hearing them saying there's a lot of um, mental health. And um, I went into um, a couple of schools and we did um, home ec. And I remember one principal keep on coming and asking me about this particular student. She said, you have any problem with her? I'm like, no. She Believe it or not, she was a quick learner. She was my best student. We was making 3D pillows for the bed. Oh, wow. And after the third time she asked me that, I'm like, is there something I need to know? She said, well, she's a hell raiser. You talking about the same student? <laughs> you know, that was the thing. And I said, well, you know, you need to come to observe. And she did came and observe at the door. And she couldn't believe this child. So our kids need, because when I was in school many moons ago, we had cooking, we had sewing, we had um, music. The kids don't have that outlet anymore. And I don't know why they took it out of the schools. And now it's being replaced with, uh, unfortunately, uh, the digital social space that can be very harmful um, if not yeah. monitored for our young yeah. people. So, yes. So I want to just, uh, you know, dig in a little bit deeper about, um, so you have five gardens and you probably serve as an advisor to others that you're probably not mentioning in your bio. Um, <laughs> tell us why did you get started with, with all of this community love? This was a hobby that turned into a business. Um, I always like gardening. I gardening in my backyard. Um, when I retired, semi-retired, because um, I was fortunate to retire at 42. Mm. Um, I'm 60 plus. Let's leave it with a plus. <laughs> Um, amazing. <laughs> um, so it's over 20 plus years. Um, you know, I just had an amazing husband that said, listen here, 
do you. And I was able to do me helping out the seniors in the community because that's one of my passion. And um, I went to the Powell Street Garden. Miss Brown went and helped her. And with helping her there after three months, um, she like you, the person I was looking for. Um, mm -hmm. There was other people, there was other people in the garden and say, oh no, you're not going to get it because she probably promised it to us. But what I find out later on, the space is a gorgeous, is an oasis in the middle of Brownsville. It's recreation and educational. And all they was doing was partying. They was not doing the purpose of the garden was teaching gardening, helping people with vegetables and stuff like that. So that's why they wasn't able to be her successor. So once she retired and I was her successor, um, one of the things I didn't know that um, Green Thumb comes around and see what you're doing. Once mm -hmm. they saw what I was doing, um, they had another site because Giuliani had this thing, lose it, use it or lose it. Um, there was gardeners wasn't doing they were supposed to do. They didn't want you to lose the sites. So they asked me would I take it over. I took it over. Um, after that, it was a third site that asked me to take over. We took it over. Um, my husband was getting in a panic mode. How many sites we going to be taking over? Yeah. Um, and then after that, um, it was two other seniors because, you know, seniors talk. Um, Mr. Shane, you got some, could, could you come and see me at this garden? And I'm like, okay. And when I went to the garden, well, you know, I want to retire, but I want you to have it. I want you to manage it because what you're doing by Powell and that was the fourth one. And the fifth one was the same thing. And, you know, after that, my husband said, no many gardens, this is enough, <laughs> you know, um, it, it, it's too much of running around. It's too much of running around, but it's. I never saw it as a job. I always saw it as a hobby and still see it as a hobby because um, I love it. And um, <laughs> my team, when they see me sitting on quiet, looking around, they're like, oh my God, here she goes again. Another idea is brewing. <laughs> uh, I say I'll sleep on it. And definitely, I'm telling you, I serve an awesome God because I know it's not me. I'm, I'm a good thinker, but I know um, he's placing this in my heart to help my community that needs this um, work done. So um, um, I, I feel so blessed. And every morning when I do my devotion, I thank him for choosing me to be his ambassador, to be able to help my community with these ideas and being able to manage. And it sounds like a lot. It is a lot. But to me, it's not a lot, the five gardens, because when you love something, you don't see it as a job. Mm -hmm. And this is a community that need fresh produce. Every other community get fresh produce. And one of the things um, I was very annoyed with last year was with the COVID. Um, they brought in emergency food in all the boroughs, in all the zip codes. But why did we got garbage? I never know scrapple. I had to look it up. And it's the worst thing to feed people. But now my sister live out in the island. You want to see their food bags? They had the best of the best. Why were we getting garbage? That is not right. So other people like me, I have a lot of like-minded colleagues. We have to take care of our communities because the system is not taking care of our communities the way they need to be taken care of. Okay? Our seniors don't have the capability of going miles away, driving or getting on the bus to get fresh produce. So we need, it's our obligation as the next generation to be providing that to our community, to our young mothers that have several kids that can't go, can't afford to pay a cab to bring the food in. We should be doing it for them and helping them. You know, it's so, it's so interesting. Um, 
so I bought um, for my little person in the midst of COVID, because I have a, a, a six-year-old that's going on 30 years old. She acts like a 30-year-old. <laughs> and so I remember, um, you know, trying to figure out specifically when we first got into the start of the pandemic, like what fun things we can do to try to get her, you know, her mind and also my mind engaged as well. So I wound up buying a, um, like a small, this, I got this all from Dollar Tree. Cause they had like, they have like these little pots, like certain times a year, they stock up yeah. on like, um, you know, uh, the, the planters and all these fun things. So I probably yeah. spent like $10 on like stuff, dirt, seeds and all this other stuff. So we came home and that was like our project. And we wound up planting, um, the not they're not are they called marigolds the uh the yes. flowers that look like yellow yes. right so they yeah so when we planted marigolds. them and they started to grow and i was like oh this is a thing for her because she would look to see she would look to see water it look to see put it in a window and that would be her daily thing and checking when something started to bloom i like to your point earlier you're talking about how you know um providing opportunities for, to help with your overall mental wellness, right? For young people, yes. like some, I had, so this is me being a new parent um, to a, this is like, <laughs> my, this is my new journey. So recognizing that I'm raising a human, a small human, not just, you know, um, someone who I don't need to listen to, but that you respect their feelings and understand that they're growing and watching us. So we wind up planting kale. Um, we have we have kale growing now. Um, we took a garlic bulb, right? So this is another thing we we split it, planted it, and it started growing. And we were like in awe, right? And I think more so <laughs> me than her because I didn't know that you can do that. So we have um, cilantro, um, kale, and spinach that's growing now. And we also have peppers and that, and those seeds came from like Home Depot in the dollar store. So we're trying to do a lot better with, um, you know, growing our own food, right? Some of the things that we buy frequently and that we eat, um, you know, we do smoothies and all type of things that I didn't grow up on because I grew up on chips and <laughs> other <laughs> unhealthy things. So that's really, I, I really appreciate you. Um, you know, sharing that about, you know, parenting and some of the things that we can can do as alternatives, like just using our windowsill can be a start of the right. process for yes. us. Yes. yes, it can. And that's awesome because when I work in the schools with the kids and we plant a seed, I have them journal the mm. journey of the seed they planted. And that's a way of getting kids to um, start writing. Because a lot of the kids, oh, I don't want to write nothing. But this is the way. You write it in your own words. What do you see? How many days it take? When you see the first um, leaf start coming out of the ground, what did you feel? What did you think about mm -hmm. it? And as it grows, you know, you just keep on. When you finish, you got a book. You have a journey on what you plan. And it get, and then when they start bearing fruit and they go eat from it, that's a means of starting kids to eat in healthy because you know what? This is my plant. I grew that. So I'm going to eat from it. It, it gives them an excitement. It gives them a different aspect. As you say, you eat chips. Now from your, your, your generation now, your offspring is not going to be eating chips. They want healthy initiative. I have a granddaughter. She's 12 years old. And I laugh at her because she's like, Grandma, what else are we going to be doing? Because she is so into this garden. She's cooking. She said, um, what time are you going to get home today? Because I have a surprise for you. I I, I did. I, I cook something. And I'm like, you cook? She said, like, yeah, Grandma, I'm going to cook. I've been watching you. And I got the greens and stuff. And she cook her little dishes and make her little pictures. And she's excited. And that's what we need because when we grow it our own, you know, a lot of ailments we have, 
We have it from the food we are eating because they're using chemicals. When you use chemical on plants, the, the chemicals is going in the plant and we consuming it and it's messing up our system. But if you grow it naturally, that's why we, um, I'm a master composter. Mm. I do compost. People are like, what miracle grow you grow? I had um, spinach this year. My spinach was, you put two of your hands together. That's how large our leaves was. And everyone was fascinated. Oh my God, what miracle grow? I need to buy that. I said, no, it's compost. And it's also helping the landfill. You got your, your eggshells, you have your potato peels, you had your carrot peels, whatever vegetables you use, as long as you didn't put no um, substance on it, like um, salad dressing or anything like that, you could use those peels and they become fertilizer. Mm. And that is what we use. You understand? And it th the stuff grows so beautifully. And you know what? It's a healthier you and it's a healthier me because now the spinach and stuff, the cilantro that you're growing, you know, you didn't use chemicals. No. Nope. So you know exactly what it is you grew. One less stuff to get in your system that is making you sick. And you will be surprised the way you feel because several people I have this senior and I have this picture of her and, and I was tickled pink. Uh, um, beet. Beet seeds is so bigger than a pinhead. Mm. And I told her that was beet seeds. She's like, girl, I, I can't visualize that. So anyway, we planted the seeds and stuff like that. When it was time to harvest and we pulled it out, the beet was big like a grapefruit. Wow. She took the picture and sent it to her sister. She can't stop talking about how large it came and how it grew and she grew it. She came, I think she, yeah, she's with me five years now. Wow. She came and she like, she said, only way I'm going is when you put me out. She said, I'm not going, I'm learning stuff. And she ex excited. Um, it's her motivation. Um, she's a senior also. And that's that's her her everyday thing to come out. She comes out every day besides Sunday. Once I'm there, she's there. And it's it's therapy. It's therapy, but it's also she said she has not felt this great in such a long time because it's the fresh stuff she's she's using. So, so let me let me ask you let me ask keep you up this. What you're doing. Mm -hmm. I, I will, but let me let me ask you this about um, opportunities for one to be one within a community to be able to grow, right? Are there any spaces mm -hmm. that the community can support, purchase, um, like spaces within your gardens to be able to help to grow if they don't have the spaces within their homes to do so? Yes, we have at a Street Garden in May. We have a member list and you sign up and you get um, a box for $35 for the season. So your season starts from May to October. It's a one-time fee. Wow. Um, you go plant your own. We also um, <clears throat> provide seedlings for you. And we teach you. Everyone has a green thumb. Um, but also, we are very strict. You plant it, you have to come and maintain it. Mm. No one in the garden is going to maintain it for you. Um, our rules is you respect other people's plot. You didn't plant it, you didn't pick it. You understand? Um they will let you know. I have five community gardens and I have no incident in the last 11 years because if you start confusion, I'm telling you right now, you will be put out. Mm. I don't have time for nonsense. The police, I, you know, when I start hearing that, um, gardening is becoming a very excited commodity. I don't know for what reason, but people want to do it, which is great. 
but also people come in with hidden agendas. Right. And they come in to disrupt what you have. And I'm telling you right now, I don't bite my tongue and I don't have time for nonsense. If you want to learn, I teach you for free. I provide the stuff for you. But if you come in with a hidden agenda to disrupt the flow of things, you will be asked to leave. And that is in your agreement. We have an agreement when you come in, you respect. You also will give time. You will help maintain the garden. It's not just your plot. You're going to help maintain your garden. And once you're doing that, we're all good. And what type of uh, fruits and vegetables are actually grown? What do you typically see that most uh, members grow within their plots? Tomatoes, cucumbers, um, eggplant, okra. People love some okra. Um, and, and those are the items the, you know, the basic, some do some lettuce, beans. So those are the typical things, you know, they grow. It, it, your plot is big enough that you go plant, um, tomatoes, oh, peppers. They love the hot peppers or the bell peppers. So those are the typical, you, you go plant at least five to six item in the plot that you have. And only one of each will provides a lot, especially the tomatoes. Something about tomatoes, cucumbers, and okra. When you, someone asked me yesterday, you want some stuff? I said, no, I have more than enough. No, thank you. They just grow and grow and grow. And that's the nice mm -hmm. thing um, I like about um, the participants we have. Everybody grow different things. They share with each other. So it, it you know, yeah. we are a community and I wanted to stay a community. Like when I was a kid, um, it was the extended family. You understand? It was in mine, mine, mine. It was a we, and we had stem away from the we to me, me, me. And if we go back to that, I think, um, a lot of things will be differently. We also, um, do workshops. Mm -hmm. on different things that people don't know. Um, there's different kind of kales. The majority of people know curly kale, but there's dinosaur kale. There's the red leaf kale. Um, mm -hmm. There is at least 10 different kind of kales. And we teach you which one is good for cooking, which one is good for juicing, um, mm. tomatoes, well, there's, 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 shucks, there's like 50 variety of different tomatoes. Um, cucumbers is the same thing. It have the little pickling, it have the gherkins, it have the long ones. I mean, it, it, it's just when you see different things in the community, in, in the community garden, we explain, well, this is what this is. Um, and you will see the different things growing, um, in, <laughs> in, the heart of Brownsville, we grow cherries. We have a cherry tree. We have a pear. We have cran apple. We have figs. Um, oh. Do you all grow um, potatoes, like sweet potatoes or yams? Um, one year we grow it, but it takes a lot. Okay. It takes a lot of space. So we try to grow things that don't take up that much space that we could have a larger yield to, to give out. Um, like corn, I don't grow corn. Um, corn is, is great, but corn takes a lot and it strips your soil from its nutrient value. So okay. when the year is up, you have to do a lot of replenishing with cover crop and all of that kind of stuff. So, and then also corn, believe it or not, encourage rodents. Rodents mm. love corn. So I try not to put nothing that's going to um, attract those little critters. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this. What is the key um, from your perspective to really um, making communities really healthy? Like, how do we really start with that? Because I can think about like how I grew up with the corner stores and, you know, having for breakfast, like uh, a quarter water 
and like some donuts. That was my breakfast as a kid. I couldn't put that on my stomach now as an adult because it hurts every bit of my <laughs> stomach now. So in, in terms of like, how do we, from your perspective, start to build healthier communities? I would like to get your perspective from that. I, I feel if um, we start, like you say, the, the older kids know, but we start from elementary school teaching them about healthy choices. For breakfast, you go have some oatmeal, start teaching them how to make the pancakes, start teaching them how to do the oatmeal, and you put the fruit in it, or you have a fruit cup. Once you they, they, they get the hang of that, that a donut is not breakfast, a real meal. I go back to my grand. They will tell you, grandma, fix me my oatmeal before I leave. They, they eat the donuts and stuff like that, but that's not breakfast. They want a meal. They want some pancakes. Um, they want, um, I introduce them to crepes. I made crepes for them. And the crepes is really great with when you're introducing kids to breakfast because they are thin. But the great thing about it is the fillings. So this is the way um, from the apples and the pears that we grow. Um, once they look a little beat up, um, I make jelly and jams. I make my own jelly and jams. I make my own hot sauce that we sell at the garden, um, at the farmer's market. So the apple, you go make the filling to put in the crepes from the apple. You go make it from the pears, um, figs, from the cherry. And it's great. Oh, wow. We made this. Now we're going to put this aside. We're going to wrap it up. We're going to eat it. Oh, this tastes great. So I, I feel is we introduce if the schools, again, go back to home economic mm -hmm. and start teaching them about healthy choices for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we can have a community. Going back also with, we have a lot of young parents, very young parents, these teenagers, um, none of us is perfect. Okay. We all make mistakes. When you ask a child in kindergarten, what you want to be this week, they want to be a doctor. Next week, because they see the firemen, they want to be a fireman. The next week, they want to be a policeman. And they, they it's always a profession they want to do. You had all of these ambitions. Things happen. It's not the end of the world. And I wish that I reach out to more people <laughs> because I put it out there. Reach out to us. Let's see what we can do to help you to get back on the road. You slip off. It's okay. We all slip. We all make mistakes. What could we do to help you? You understand? Um, it has a workshop I do. And I it, it's one of my favorite because I'm also a licensed caterer. Like I tell you, I wear a lot of hats. And I came up with it and it was a, a great thing. And it's um, home ec and culinary mixed thing. So it's like healthy entertainment. Okay. Mm -hmm. So teach you how to sew, you make your runner for your table with your napkins. And then when we finish, do the, you know, the economic part, the home ec part, we now we're going to go to the, um, the culinary part. So you're going to cook something simple, take a half an hour or less, you put together and then you, your table look beautiful. Now you set it on your table and it's all about presentation. And they're like, wow, you know, so I learned how to sew and I learned how to fix some nice dishes for my family. So, okay, let's have a conversation while we sit down and eating. What can I help you? Okay, you drop out of school. It's, it's, it's not the end of the world. Something happened. It's yesterday. Let it stay yesterday. Let's see what we could do today. Right. What do you need? You need help in child care? Let's find a child care place. You know. You by yourself. You got these kids. A man is icing on your cake. You go eat your cake without icing. Trust you. I'm a baker. <laughs> you understand? Do not leave another person define who you going to be. You have these kids you brought into this world. What are you going to do? What role model are you going to be for them? 
You could be anything. When I say on TV that these, you know, from from public assistant and they got back on track and went back to school and do things. Okay, college is not for anybody, but let's find a vocational that will help you. You like doing hair? Let's get you in, in, in some cosmetology school. You understand? You like giving massages? Let, let's get you into a massage class. But there's things that you can do. Be all you can be. And that and that is something like where were you when I was like <laughs> young? <laughs> like, you know, it's it's very it's very refreshing to to hear those um you know, those affirmations about the things that we can do. Um, I'll be 46 coming up. And I tell you, it's never um, not an opportunity to learn from someone who does have, you know, experience. So I appreciate all of those gems um, and saying, especially that it doesn't matter where we start, we don't have to finish the same way we started. And so no, I will be no, told. Go ahead. I said, no, we don't. And you're absolutely correct. So, you know, you're in a position that, um, <laughs> as I said, I'm the quiet one. As you say, it took forever to catch up with me, right? Um, <laughs> I love my own company. I have, I have no problem in being alone, but everybody's not like that. I like um, I love to shop by myself because when I'm ready to come home, I want to come home. I don't want you to tell me, oh, um, well, I'm not ready yet. Uh, why are you buying that? That don't look like you. I didn't ask your opinion. Okay. It's what I want to do. But everyone is not like that. You know, our young people today, I realize they love a crowd. Okay. They, they like to be crowd pleasers. I was never, I was always a quiet child. But mm -hmm. you're in a position that you need more people. And I'm putting it out there. If you have teenagers, you have young people that need help. Um, one of my other hats, I'm a chaplain. <laughs> mm. um, I, I can work with them. I'm willing to work with young people that want to work. Don't come because mama say you've got to come. Come because you want to make a change and somebody want to give them my time. I'm not charging you. My time is free. But it's also, you got to pay for my time. And how are you going to pay for my time? You're going to be all you're going to be. You're going to make me proud. You're going to be the next president. I used to tell kids, um, I was a Girl Scout leader for 25 years. And I used to tell my students that you could be the next president of the United States. And they used to say, oh, no, black people don't be presidents. I say, yes, you can if you work hard. And it was coincident <laughs> when President Obama came. Several of them called me. You had a crystal ball? You had I said, no, you can be anything you want. The sad part about it, we just have to work triple harder. But we can be. Don't let nobody tell you. You know what's happening with a lot of young people? They're into some unhealthy homes. Let's use that term. And a parent or uh, uh, whoever is raising the guardian say, oh, you're not going to amount to nothing. You're not going to be squat. You're not going to be this. They tell the kids that so many times that is embedded. And I'm telling them, you are somebody. And you could amount to something. Let no one define you. And when somebody tell you that you're not, prove them wrong. Don't prove them right. And what mm -hmm. we need to do as adults, advocates, as how you say, where were you? You know your own journey. What can we do going forward to help our kids in the community to be all they can be? And I, I actually just want to add that I think it starts <laughs> with, with all of us, right? You know, doing yes. a little yes. bit, doing just a, a part. little bit. It doesn't yes, take a, it doesn't, it does not, in my opinion, take um, 
you know, a lot just to, um, if you're uh, passionate about working with young people, um, sharing your, your honest journey, your honest journey, not, you know, keeping them hidden from all the things that mm -hmm. they, so that, so that they won't have, they will go through things. But when you hear or see someone sharing their experience, um, and it's from a perspective that you can actually relate to, chances are mm -hmm. you'll remember when you're getting into stuff that, you know, that's not the most appropriate way to go, even though your, yes. your journey is different. So I, I really appreciate that you sharing that and wanted to also ask, do you have any upcoming events that um, you want to share? Yes, we are having on the 30th is the last day, as I was saying, outdoors for the farmer's market. So on that day, we have a family day. So the family, they're going to consist of um, a scavenger hunt for the kids with Halloween. Um, we, ask, we ask to go back old school. Mom, you know, grandmas, don't go and buy a costume. Be creative. Mm. Let, let's be creative and make the costumes. And we have all these pictures that... Um, that my kids, we laugh about it because it's funny of all um, the costumes. I used to come up with making costumes for them. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> one year I wrote out her um, ideas and my youngest, I said, you're going to be a bag lady this year. So we got an old wig and a long dress. And, you know, the other one was... Um, Inspector Clouseau and, you know, you could just think of anything you can, you want to think and, you know, um, be creative. So we have um, prizes for the, um, the most creative, you know, costume. We are having also um, food demonstrations that day. Um, I asked a couple of HMOs to come out and talk to people. Um, hopefully we, the, the people do show up for diabetes. We have a diabetes wellness going to be there. Um, it, it, it's going to be just a day of information and fun. Um, the street going to be closed. They go do games. We could do some arts and craft. So it's going to be, um, a great day. Every, um, Saturday, the market is open. Um, we have vendors selling, um, pocketbooks. We have, um, a line of preserve and hot sauce and um, jellies and jams that we're selling. Um, we have the local honey. So, you know, every week we are there. We have two more Saturdays, this Saturday and next Saturday is our last, but just, just come out. Um, we also, I put it out there, but too many people did not take advantage of it. Um, if you're a person and you want to start a business, but you're not sure, um, want to rent a storefront because there's an arm and 10 legs in Brownsville lately. Um, you go rent this, you go take a spot at, at the garden, at the market, open marketplace for $25. You go bring out your, whatever creativity you have, whatever you make and, and see if this is really for you, you want to do and sell your product. So we got two Saturdays left and next year we'll try it again and hopefully more people will take advantage of it. Wow. So I want to just emphasize a couple of things. One, the opportunity to bring back home economics to the community. That's first, right? The yes, also to be able to learn how to farm, um, you know, and to be create some sort of self sufficiency for yourself and for your family through farming. Yeah. And then the other thing I want to add is your workshops that you have. But now mm -hmm. you added in the opportunity for a budding entrepreneur to try yes, and rent the space at a very yep. low cost to be able to test the market. Yes, mm. ma'am. So. This is another avenue <laughs> in which we have community <laughs> uh, members of the community that are really doing things 
differently because we have a genuine love for the work, but also a genuine love for our future. And so when you have yeah. someone who is offering a variety of different things, it's really a labor of love. But we also know that Ms. Duchesne has a gift and we want to make sure that we support all of the efforts um, that Ms. Duchesne is doing. And so on that, how can we find you? I know that we have a website that we're going to plug um, where are you actually accepting any donations for any of your programs or services right now through your yes. website? When you go, when you go to the website, it has a donate. Um, we have a donation um, area that you can donate and, you know, we spread it evenly across where who need funding and what we're doing. But also um, we have, you have the email address also. If someone interested in workshops, we work with you. Um, we work within your budget. We work, we will, I just want to put it out there. Be fair and we'll be fair because they'd want a lot for nothing, but you have to understand there's people have to come. We are bringing um, we are bringing the items and everyone needs to be paid. You understand? Um, and if you can't afford it, do what is right. We will work with you, but you're not going to beat us down. So, and there's also, yeah, I would say, don't ahead. be abusive. I would say, don't be abusive. Cause that, exactly. that, happens, exactly. that, that happens a lot when you have someone with a genuine heart. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, they know we want to do these things in the communities for the kids and stuff like that. But, you know, what a lot of people don't realize, um, anybody could go look you up and see what funds you was allocated to because it's public knowledge. Right. So don't lie. Right. <laughs> you know, people, people plays a lot of games and stuff like that. And we're not about that. Um, we need to help teach get these kids from their phones 24 7 um and bring them back they, these kids are so creative when we made those 3d pillowcases they was like wow we did this yes you could do a lot more these kids have skills but they, the skills is not being tapped into because all of this electronics you understand? Because the electronics and the TV and the and the, and the Netflix and the Hulu and the Bulu and all the stuff that is out there, um, they have time to start thinking and using their imagination. When we was kids, and I think up to your generation, y'all was a little creative. Y'all play double dutch, at least still. That was still mm -hmm. in, 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 in the making and stuff like that. You hardly see that anymore. So let's get these kids being creative. Um you know, you want to be, we don't teach our kids enough to be business owners. We just te teaching them to be consumers. Stop being consumer. Let's teach them what skills you have. Let's tap into those skills. Let's nourish those kids and help them. You might want to do several things. Let's, let's start tapping into it. Try it out. It, maybe you don't like this one. Let's try the other one. But let's help them to be a better um, person and leave the phone alone. Because the only person that's making money is Verizon and AT&T and whoever else got all these phones and Bill Gates that's building these things. But what, what self-sufficiency you have, what creativity you have. A lot of kids love also the um, baking cooking a lot of kids is into the cooking lately Let, let's tap into that we're gonna have the next top shelf and we don't know we have the next top chef because we tap into that creativity we could have the next president we have so many talented kids but they just not being tapped into so, so it may have taken us a very long time, a year or two, but nothing happens before it's the time. good Lord is ready. Okay. So, um, you know, what's in my heart, you know, how I feel. If you know someone, you know, the young kids that need it. Um, you got my number, you can reach out to me and 
we, from what I'm hearing from you also, you have a passion for your community. We can work together and help this community be a more healthier community. And so you just gave me like all the chills right now because I, I feel <laughs> the the genuineness in that. And so I will definitely, if there's anything that I can do, um, likewise to be supportive to you, whether it's, you know, additional promotion, whatever it is that you can think of um, to support you, because I, I know of the work that you have been doing. Um, and I think that, you know, continuing a legacy of really just, you know, building healthy mind, body, and spirits is what is, you know, additionally needed or can to, not needed, but to be continued in the com community mm -hmm. because it is being done in small pockets, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, just making sure that we, we find courageous ways to be supportive of one another um, in any We have a lot of future i know somewhere in those schools those young minds we have future farmers i'm looking for young future farmers that is want to learn that when i leave i know brownsville is still taken care of by the black and brown young people i want them to understand the importance of growing farming you know, you might think, oh, it's small, a little small thing. It's okay. We can't save the world, but we could save most of it. We could save Brownsville. We go help Brownsville. And the more, one of the things, um, um, speaking to several people about, we need more, um, just how they say we need more affordable housing. Yes, you got more affordable housing, but we need more land to build to grow healthy, to take care of our community. You know, they're, they're building, Brownsville is the most high rise place now with all these new buildings coming up. But, okay, so where's the food to feed the people? We need evil, even space to grow and make sure that we eat as healthy as any other community. We have access to healthy food, just like any other community. Everyone don't have a car to go out the community. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna have it in the community that they have easy access. Very true. And so um, in wrapping up, because you, you you gave a lot of great gems. I feel like this is a conversation that needs probably a part two or part three. But, you know, <laughs> I just feel like, I feel like I was just on your couch, just like I was one of the, the, the nieces and nephews getting some some good gems. And I really appreciate that. So for the, the this winter coming up, right? So, you know, everybody's anticipating, you know, excited, maybe, maybe not about, you know, this upcoming season, any last minute thoughts that you want to provide in terms of like, you know, how do we remain well during this, this season? Well, what we, what we are planning, if things work out the way I'm looking, we're going to start a weekly, um, a weekly zoom that you go log into on doing, um, is even if it's a healthy juice or a healthy um, dish. So that, you know, we'll be doing to help you during the winter months and we'll be giving you a challenge that you come up with something. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would like people to join, to, to join the group. It's, it's like a group thing. And this is a way, um, besides what I'm telling you and I'm sharing with you, I want you to take that initiative and also be creative because we all have creativity in us. We just need to just nudge it a little bit. So with what we're going to be um, showing and talking about, and let, let, let's, let's have a, 
uh, of uh, conversation on staying healthy um, during the winter months because we don't ha have the flu only to contend with. We also have a deadly virus and we have to eat healthy. I'm not telling you not to treat yourself to McDonald's ever so often because that's what kids like, but you know what? Start cooking at home with the kids and, and doing healthy choices to make your immune system stronger, to build a healthier you. And then you go weather more storms. But if, you, if, if your system is weak, the first thing blow your way, you're going to be knocked down. So, you know, I hope everyone, um, instead of drinking sodas, guys drink more herbal teas. Also, uh, also we got a line of herbal teas also, because the herbs, a lot of the herbs we grow, we cook with them and we make teas. So please come out this Saturday to the market and see what we're offering. <laughs> it, it, it will be interesting. And this is at the Powell location, or is it all the locations? Yes, ma'am. Is that the okay? No, the power location, yeah, so, yeah. Um, because we have we have two markets, one at Sutter and Rockaway, and then that's a that's a farm stand, and then we have the the market that you can't get everything is at the power location. But just you know, you you don't have to take my teas, but I just want you. Everyone is so great in getting on um, line. My kids, when I ask them something, they told me, Ma, Google it, Google it. Trust you me. Google is your next best friend. Google it. They got everything there. And whatever your ailment or whatever you're feeling for the cold to build you up, it gives you a lot of choices. And the nice thing about the choices is give you, um, you might not like A, but you might like B. So use B. As long as it's building your immune system, it's good for you. I'm not saying don't drink coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker. Never been. But the teas, introduce the kids to more teas. Make them with them. Grow grow them, as you say, on your windowsill. Grow some, um, some thyme, some lemon thyme. You go cook with it, and you go make some thyme tea. It's a lovely tea to drink. Some basil. Basil you cook with and you drink the basil tea. So mm -hmm. you're getting two for one, you know? So those are the things during the summer months, the winter months now that is coming up. That will be an ideal thing because we're going to be inside because it's cold. Start a little herbal, um, a little herbal garden on your windowsill with the family. Choose the herbs that you can make tea from it and do both. Cook with it, come up with dishes, be creative, mix and match, and drink the tea on cold nights. I can't tell you how 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 that sounds right now. <laughs> A nice cup of tea um, to you know to make the body feel nice and cozy. So yes, on that note, I I want to say I am very grateful to have had this very um, enlightening and loving conversation with you. I look forward to seeing you around the neighborhood, saying hello and sneaking a hug. Cause I, <laughs> I, I was told that I liked the hug. I'm like, when you got the, the, the good energy and the good vibes, that's what you do. And so I want to say thank you so much for your time. Um, look forward to connecting with you and sending you lots of virtual hugs and kisses until I actually see you, you in person. All right, take good Thank care. Thank you. You too. Have a blessed day. All right, you too. Take good care, Mr. Shane. And so it is really, I, 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 I tell you, I felt like I was just being lots of love with one of my one of my aunties. So I want to thank Mr. Shane for taking time to come out of her busy schedule to come on the Brownsville Minute to be able to share. Um, her journey, and also to be able to share some realistic tips to help us to become well as a community. I am really excited because um, 
we do have some community announcements. Um, as Ms. Duchesne mentioned, that um, there are two more Saturdays for her farmer's market um, at her location. So again, please take advantage of the services, the fruits, the vegetables that are there um, at cost. Um, very healthy. You know where the food is is coming from. It's actually being grown in Brownsville and also in, in parts of East New York. So I definitely want to be sure that you watch for um, those dates. Also, as we wrap up the Brownsville Minute for this episode, I want to share um, a number of community announcements, um, including Ms. Duchesne's um, events that are coming up. So please stay tuned. And thank you so much for joining the Brownsville Minute. Um, please be sure to check out um, the website is scrolling at the bottom um, for donations, contributions to the organization. But also just if you wanna come by any of the um, community gardens to just stop by and say hello, or if you are interested in purchasing um, a, a, a area where you can support um, the cause, but also to support yourself, um, in terms of being self-sufficient and learning with food, there is an opportunity to do so. So on that note, I want to thank you for joining the Brownsville Minute. Stay tuned for our community announcements. Bye-bye.